A warm welcome to VTU e Sikshana program. So, in this video, we are going to continue the module number 5 of artificial neural network supervised vector quantization. The Cohen suggested using the supervised version of a vector quantization, which is going to be called as learning vector quantization LVQ. Shortly, we are going to call it as learning vector quantization, where the data classes are going to be defined in advance and each data sample is going to be labeled within its class as we have seen in the last video. So, the learning vector quantization, each neurons is going to be assumed to represent a class and the weight update procedure is going to be get followed for this winning neuron J and other neurons when J is not equal to capital J, which is going to be get modified with the help of this particular expression. And the practical aspects if you are going to see about for this learning vector quantization, the learning rate must be lies between 0 to 1 that is to made to decrease mono, monotonically with successive iterations. So, it is usually recommended to be 0.1. In a limited training set, vector may be applied clinically to the system as the learning rate made to be decreased linearly to 0. So, that the supervised version of this vector quantization equation is similar to unsupervised vector quantization. The difference is if the vectors are going to be misclassified and corresponding weight vectors are going to be moved away from the present input to reduce the possibilities of misclassifications rather than leaving them unchanged. So, that the Cohen suggested that one should keep an equal number of codebook vectors per class which ultimately lead to an optimal approximation of this class code boundaries. So, that initialization of code book vectors may be done to the actual samples of each classes. So, finally, the neutral network have a tendency of over learn and it becomes necessary to define the number of iterations are going to be there in advance. So, the number of iterations might be anything from the value may vary from 50 to 200 as I mentioned in the previous video. The number of codebook vectors are going to be selected for the representations. However, there is no substitute for the experience in selection of this suitable simulation parameters. Let me see the operational summary of this learning vector quantization 1. As just given over there, the input stream of labeled vectors and that belongings to one of the class C, it may be any one of the classes it has to be present over there it must be belonging to a class C. And we need to initialize the number of classes what to be get generated, we have to initialize. And the quantization vectors, the Wj for all the classes as to be get random samples of this input data to be get initialized. Then the learning rate as to be get scheduled as per the formula which have been given over there with a value of 0.1. As we have said that it must be the learning rate may be varies as small as small as we are going to take 0.1 value. We are going to initialize that learning rate schedule. And the maximum iterations as we said we are going to reduce from 110 to 0 with an iteration rate of 2 q. So, we are going to maximize the number of iterations as 2 q. Usually, we are going to make it q. Here, we are going to take 2 q. 
either q or two q both are can be get acceptable that can be taken over there. Along with that we have to go for an iteration index k has to be get mentioned it has to be initialized with value 0. Then the actual iteration starts over there we have we need to pick a data sample from the data system the data stream of system and we need to find the winning neuron index we need to find the winning neuron index j and we need to update the winning neuron synapse with the expression which have been given over there already we have been come across the class which is going to be specified for the x value may be set of or may be not a subset of and we need to update the learning rate each and every time it has to update the learning rate. So, we are going to update the learning rate also over here and this is going to be repeat until the k value is going to be greater than the max details which is going to be take the maximum iteration. Such a way we are going to summarize the operational summary. So, this is going to be the operational summary of a learning vector quantization 1. So, let me follow the next topic Mexican hat networks, Mexican hat networks. It is a biological motivation actually it is going to be called as a biological motivation. As we discussed the behavior of the competitive layer of neurons which had self exploratory and lateral in habitatory connectivity within the network. So, it was established that the behavior of such networks strongly depends on the nature of the neuron signal function. For example, we can take that closely we can follow this biological structure. The evidence that a certain two dimensional structures of a visual cortex neurons have a lateral interactions with their connectivity pattern that exhibits which is going to be present over there. So, a faster than linear signal function results in a winner take all kind of behavior. This is what we call it as hard competition. A fast then linear signal function results in a winner take all kind of behavior is going to be called as hard competition. So, this section introduces a network design that permits soft competitions to take place instead of having a single winning neuron. Here a cluster of neurons around the winning or the winner retains finite signal level with other neurons in the network have their signal is going to be get suppressed. So, in this design we are going to have the region of in repetitory iterations outside the area of short range and which is going to exhibit with extents to a distance of about 200 to 500 micrometer. So, in this decision of this network we closely follow biological evidence that certain two dimensional structures of visual cortex neurons have the lateral interactions, the lateral interactions with their connectivity pattern that exhibits three things short range, short range lateral excitation within the radius of 50 to 100 micrometer, a range of inhibitory iterations outside the area of short range excitation which extends to a distance of about 200 to 500 micrometer and a region of several centimeters beyond this with a weak excitatory connections that is going to be get present over there. So, with the help of that the Mexican hat connection function which is going to get portrayed over here in this figure. 
the nature of this iterations is going to be get captured in this Mexican hat connection function with a single for a single neuron with the index j with the index j. So, if you can see about that several centimeters distance is going to be taken over there as I said about that we are going to have 50 to 100 neurons and 200 to 50 neurons uh, micro uh, meter distance have been taken over there in the neuron. So, for a single neuron how this is going to be get exhibit which is going to be get studied very clearly like from this Mexican hat connectivity pattern. So, this Mexican hat connectivity pattern exhibits the neuron in the visual context visual context such a way it is going to be get exhibits over here. So, how this Mexican hat neural network is going to be get formulated? It is important to understand that the figure which describes this figure which describes the connection strength of a single neuron with respect to its neighbor in the network which is going to be connected with the neighbor in the network. So, every neuron in this network follows this connectivity pattern which is going to be called as Mexican hat network or Mexican hat connectivity. So, network with Mexican hat connectivity exhibits two distinguished behavioral property. The two distinguished behavioral property are called the spatial activity across the network clusters locally about winning neurons that is first is first distinguished property is nothing but a spatial activity across the network cluster locally about the winning neuron. The second property a local cluster positions are dictated or which is going to be get decided by the nature of the input pattern by the nature of the input pattern ok. So, which is going to be get portrayed with this particular figure. This architecture of an M neuron network that has a lateral iterations which is going to be designed and inter external inputs which is going to be received through the connections. So, such matrix or such networks with a Mexican hat connectivity are going to be called as Mexican hat neural network, Mexican hat neural network. So, a linear array of neurons with the Mexican hat connectivity has been shown over there 1, 2, 2, j, 1, 2, 3, 3, 5, 7, j etcetera up to m and which is going to have a different iterations over here. So, it shows the linear array of neurons with Mexican hat connectivity understand which is going to be called as the Mexican hat neural network Mexican hat neural network got it. So, this Mexican hat neural network can be classified the total neural activity of the jth neuron as a sum of two components. The neuron signal function which is usually the piecewise linear threshold function. So, that which is going to be present over there as an external input and lateral feedback external input and lateral feedback. So, here the term S L has been mentioned over there this term is nothing but a possible non-linear signal function usually the piecewise linear threshold function as I said over there where this value is going to be taken into S L is equal to the summation value of X L which is going to be taken X L. As a computer simulation result shows the neural network described here in exhibits a group level competitions a group of neurons in a neighborhood of this maximum input switch on and all other neurons have their activities suppressed. So, this is referred to as an activity cluster or an activity bubble 
this is going to be called as an activity cluster or an activity bubble. So, the neighborhood of this maximum input switch on all the other neurons have their activities to be get suppressed and referred as an activity cluster or activity bubble. So, instead of a single winning neuron a group of neurons are going to be get wins. This is going to be the actual effort of this particular Mexican hat neural network. To clarify our understanding of this Mexican hat network, we can perform a simulation in one or two dimensional networks also. We can perform that in an one or two dimensional uh, networks. We can do and we can come to understand, come to know about the understanding of this particular thing. Okay. So, as I mentioned about that the computer simulation for this neural network describes the here in exhibits a group level competitions. So, a group of neurons in a neighborhood of this maximum input switch on allows the other neurons which have been their activities as suppressed. So, which is going to be called as an uh, activity cl uh, cluster or an activity bubble. So, instead of this makes a single winning neuron becomes a group of neurons wins. So, which is going to give a clarity for us. So, that we will perform one dimensional network Mexican hat network simulation and two dimensional Mexican hat network simulations. Let me do the first one of one dimensional Mexican hat network simulation. Let me see about this one dimensional network simulation. Assume that index i runs over the value assuming a neuron j to be a concentrated at point 0. So, we can reformulate the equation with the help of a discrete approximation to the Mexican hat connectivity to make it a meaningful for this purpose of simulation. To do so, we assume that a neuron receives a constant lateral excitation from two L neighbors and a constant lateral inhibition from two M neighbors. So, we are going to take L and M neighbors. Such a connectivity function is going to be get present with the 25th neuron in a network of 50th neuron which is going to be arranged into a linear spatial array. So, here we are going to assume that the value we are going to take an assumption here L is equal to 5 and M is equal to 10 assume that. The strength of this feedback connections are assumed A is equal to 0.1 for excitatory connections and B is equal to 0 0.05 for inhibitory connection. So, that long range excitation which have been seen already in the figure can be ignored in this approximation. So, that we can rewrite the expression, we can rewrite the expression. So, before rewriting that we will see about that one. The signals that corresponds to the index value that are out of range which are going to be simply to be get disregretted assumed to be 0. So, that the function is going to be smooth function of the array index. Hence, this approximation which is going to be healed the value of x j is equal to a summation of i is equal to minus l to capital L minus l to plus L of S i minus B value of the summation has been taken over there where J is equal to 1 to M. Hence, I said about this A value and B value to be get assumed over there. As I said we can assume the value of A and B, A is equal to 0.1 and B is equal to 0 0.05 and we are going to assume the value L is equal to 5 and m is equal to 10. So, this long range excitation can be ignored in this approximation. So, that we are going to get the smooth function for this array index of j. 
from this we can generalize the difference form how we are going to generalize the difference form the j is equal to 1 to m this equation can be solved iteratively until the network relaxes to a steady state the parameters a and b as we have mentioned in the previous one which controls the extent of excitation and inhibition that a neuron which is going to receive from this particular parameters due to the excitations. So, the feedback factor y which heals the uh, which determines the proportion of feedback that contributes to the new activation. So, that we can get the above expression can be recast into a generalized difference form has x of j to k plus 1 is equal to the feedback factor which determines the proportion of the feedback that contributes to the new activation can be mentioned over there and which controls the external or extent of excitation and inhibition of a single neuron receives A and B data have been mentioned over there as like that one ok which this way we can get this generalized difference form. So, which is going to highlight the k plus 1 note that it is introduction of the time index k we are going to introduce the time index in this particular label. Understand with the help of this we are going to discrete the approximation to a Mexican hat connectivity. So, a neuron which receives a constant lateral excitation from 2L neighbors and a constant lateral inhibitions from 2M neurons, neighbor roots. So, which is going to be required for the simulation as I said pre early with the help of that an approximation of this Mexican head connectivity which dissipates for neuron 25 in a 50 neuron linear arrays have been shown over there. Okay. So, which is going to be present over there in the 25th and the 50th neuron is going to be get proposed over there. Understand? Such a way we are going to receive this simulated result. For a single function, a neuron's single function, in the present simulation, the neuron signal functions are uniformly assumed piecewise linear. So, which can be provided this value at the condition of this three parameters either it is going to be equal to 0 or x or a. We are going to get the graph like this assuming a network of 50 linear threshold neurons each with each with the connectivity pattern portraits as shown in this figure. So, which is going to be get portrayed the particular information we simulate the system assuming a smooth sinusoidal input to the network. So, the smooth sinusoidal input to this network which is going to provide the value as i i is equal to sin of pi i by 50 where i is equal to changes from 1 to 50 and a piece wise linear signal function with a is equal to 10 which is going to portray a 15 updates on the network after the input has been applied. We have to notice that the activity bubble that forms gradually becoming narrower and rising with iterations, rising with iterations. Let me discuss about that with a particular one dimensional simulation, one dimensional simulation. So, this one dimensional simulation which is going to be get provided over here, this graphical representation shows a 15 snapshots of a neuron field updates with y is equal to 1.5 and a 15 snapshots of neuron field updates with y is equal to 0.75. As shown in this figure, the width and height of the bubble, the maximum signal strength of any neuron is a function of the feedback factor y. 
is going to be the function of feedback factor y. When a p feedback factor y is equal to, I will change the pin, it will be easy to understand. If this is going to be taken about this y is equal to 1.5, see the range, the feedback factor which is going to be given, so signal strength is going to be height is going to be more as well as width also can be get studied over there. When this value is going to be get reduced half of that, the signal height is going to get reduced whereas, width is going to be a broader one, it is going to be somewhat a broader one. You can see the width is going to be this much whereas, width is going to be this much. So, the width is going to be get changing over there as well as the height is going to be get increased, height is going to be get increased. So, the bubble height and width are going to be get varied between be, uh, because of the feedback factor y. The feedback factor decides the height and width of the bubble. So, in this figure if you are going to see about that this figure a portraits where y is equal to 1.5 and the final activity bubble is going to be a narrow and height. All the neurons within this bubble have an activity of 10 and those outside the activity bubble have activities closer to or equal to 0. Whereas, in the next figure B, the activity bubble is going to be malformed due to the poor feedback gain y is equal to 0 0.75, y is equal to 0.75. You can easily identify this value changes over here. So, let me see about the MATLAB code description for this particular data. So, this table, the program which have been mentioned over there for this MATLAB program used to perform the simulations. In this program, the executory and the inhibitory one side radi, li radius and li width are chosen to be 5 and 10 respectively I am going to choose in that value. So, the maximum signal value is going to be 10 and the excitatory weight value exits is 0.1 and the inhibitory feedback weight value which is going to be taken as minus 0 0.05. So, that the variable feedback value as 1.5, the first part of the program generates the weight in a double loop. This is a straight forward to follow it and we checks whether the target neuron lies within the excitatory amber or the inhibited preamber or beyond. So, that the input stimulus is a sign function which peaks at neuron 25. So, that the signal vector S is limited to 0. So, the relaxation process is going to be performed 15 times and each time the signal vector is going to be get updated. First, it is going to compute the activation, then it is going to calculate the signal value using this linear threshold signal function. Let me discuss about this particular code which have been written over there in the MATLAB for this Mexican hat network. As I said the Li radius is going to be 0 0.5, excitation radius, radius is going to be given over there and inhibition radius is going to be given as 10 and we are going to calculate the maximum signal value exit is equal to 0 0.1. And we are going to make this inhibit value minus 0 0.05 and we are going to give the feedback value as 1.5, the gamma value. And we are going to make the iteration 1 is to 50 to generate the Mexican hat connectivity. So, j is equal to 1 is to 50. And we need to give the weights also. So, 50 cross 50 weights we are going to mention so that for i is equal to 1 is to 50. And the index difference value is going to be j minus i has been given over here. 
and we are going to calculate about the weight with the particular exit value from this value and we are going to give the index. The index is going to be 1 is to 1 is to 50, we are going to make this excitations along with that one. So, which are going to be taken the index of 1 is to 1 is to 50 and which is going to set up the input vector value. So, that input is going to be get present in the sinusoidal manner as I mentioned already. So, sinusoidal value pi into index by 50 we have selected over there and we are going to initialize the signals to generate. So, the vector signal s is equal to 0 of 50 which is going to be get mentioned in that one. And as along with that one we are going to start the computation activations. So, before starting the computation activations we must hold the figure we have to plot it. So, that I am going to make the figure hold on and we are going to make the t is equal to 1 is to 15 because 15 times 1 is to 15 is going to be selected over there. Then I am going to start the iteration or the computation activations. So, for i is equal to 1 to 50, 1 is to 50. Then activation is going to take the inputs from that one. So, that activation is equal to activation plus feedback data are going to be get selected over here. And we have to compute the signal now. Activations have been computed already. Now, we have to compute the signal. So, signal for i is equal to 1 to 50, we have to compute this activity signals. So, computation of this activations which is going to be related with the function must be a maximum one. So, we are going to select that is going to be a max and we need to plot, we need to plot the data we need to plot that one. So, hence I am going to make the plot index which consisting of k comma x index k and signal s has to be get plotted over there until it has to be a neuron index or signal strength both has to be get plotted over there. So, hence I am going to make x label as neuron index y label as signal strength x axis as neuron index y axis as signal strength such a way this MATLAB code is going to be written for this Mexican hat network. So, the Mexican hat network which is going to be consisting of this particular data into the form. Understand? So, it is interesting to see such simulations of a two dimensional lattice of neutron. Let me discuss about the simulation part two dimensional Mexican hat network simulation. So, the figure A and B which portraits over there for this simulation. Mexican had connectivity portrait for the central neuron in a 30 cross 30 planar neuron field whereas, this figure B portraits the two dimensional Gaussian input assumed for the simulation of the planar Mexican hat network. So, for this purpose we assume that 900 neurons distributed in a 30 cross 30 layer that is why I am going to say that 30 cross 30, 30 cross 30, 30 cross 30 layer 900 neurons are going to be get simulated over here. Then the approximation to this Mexican hat connectivity takes on the form portrait in the figure A. In the simulation a two dimensional Gaussian input was assumed which is going to be assumed as i suffix i j is equal to e to the power of minus sigma of i minus c x square plus j minus c y square. So, where this i comma j is going to be the locations of this neurons on this 30 cross 30 grid the 30 cross 30 grid. So, this two dimensional input is shown in the figure which is going to be taken a is equal to 0.5 and b is equal to. So, a is equal to 0.5 and b is equal to 0 0.05 whereas, it is going to take that c x is equal to c y is equal to 15 as already we have mentioned in the MATLAB code. And with a gamma value, the feedback factor gamma value, sorry,
the feedback factor gamma value is equal to 1.5. With the help of value can be taken assumed A is equal to 0.1 and B is equal to 0 0.05. 0 0.05. So, this simulation can be assumed or it can be get simulated with the help of this. Let me see some of the simulations which is going to be present for A is equal to 1 and B is equal to 0.5. So, this is iteration 1 and iteration 2. So, there are 6 different parameters have been shown over there with the different iterations for the same 30 cross 30 grid. So, this is iteration 1 neuron index j and neuron index i. This is iteration number 2 neuron index j and neuron index i. See the difference and we are going to see about iteration 3 it has been grown over there. Iteration 4 you can see the difference and iteration 5 and iteration 6 a stage by stage or step by stage uh, step by step a different 6 snapshots of the two dimensional Mexican hat networks response to the two dimensional Gaussian input also shown in this figure. Understand? So, this figure the six consecutive snapshots of this simulations notices how quickly the activity bubble forms. The formation of such activity bubbles provides the very substract of coherent self organizing feature maps which we are going to study in the forthcoming slide. Okay. So, let me see about the self organizing feature map, the self organizing feature map. Dimensionally reduction plus prevention of this topological informations common in normal human subsequences information process. Dimensional reduction with the preservation of topological information is a common in normal human subconscious information processing. We routinely comprise the informations by extracting the relevant facts and thereby developing a reduced representations of impinging informations while retaining the essential knowledge. So, a good example is that of biological vision with three dimensional visual images which are routinely mapped onto a two dimensional retina and information which is going to get preserved in a way that permits the perfect visualization of a three dimensional world. So, as we are aware about that the dimensionally reduction with the preservation of the topological informations for the self organizing feature map which is going to be as I said about the common subconscious information which is going to get processing over there. So, which can develop a reduced representations of impinging the informations while retaining the essential knowledge about the particular data. So, as we are aware about that the three dimensional visual images which are going to be called as biological vision and humans routinely compresses the information by extracting the relevant facts always we are going to connect it with the relevant facts which develop a reduced representations of impinging the information while which are going to be get essentially needed of that. And such kind of biological uh, visions which is going to be giving a information preserved to permit a perfect visualization of the three dimensional world. In the next slide, the purpose of intelligent information processing which is going to be called as a Cohen has Cohen pointed out the purpose of intelligent information processing possibly lies in the criteria of simplified internal representations of the external world at a different levels of abstractions. So, as we have come to know about that which lies in the creation of simplified internal representations which is going to be the external world at the different levels of abstractions. 
with the help of that we are going to see about the computational maps so interestingly a specialized sensory area of the cortex responds to the availability spectrum of the real world signals in an ordered fashion okay a specialized sensory area of the cortex respond to the available spectrum of a real world signal so which is going to be in ordered fashion for example the tetonic map that is going to be the example which is going to be in a auditory cortex is perfectly ordered according to the frequency so early advance for this computational maps comes from the studies of hubel and wiesel on the primary visual context of cats and monkeys okay so as we are aware about that the early evidence for this computational maps comes from the study of hubel and wiesel on the primary visual context of cats and monkeys as cats and monkeys how it's going to visualize such things going to be present over there so they discovered two kinds of maps they discovered two kinds of maps that selectively respond to a preferred line orientation and maps of ocular dominance that indicated the relative strength of the excitatory influence of each eye let me see about an example a tetonic map in the auditory cortex is perfectly ordered according to this frequency let me see about the hierarchy of this maps how the hierarchy is going to be get present the primary map the secondary map then tertiary map the sequence of temporal processing is going to be get present from this primary to secondary from the secondary to tertiary where it's going to retains the fine granites the fine grains of topological ordering as present in the original sensory signals are going to be get mapped over there in other words there is an ample neurobiological evidence for the formation of this hierarchy of visual uh, maps in the human brain okay so primary maps are processed into secondary and tertiary maps through a sequence of temporal processing that retains fine grained topological order as present in the original se uh, sensory signal so the main point is that in pattern recognition and the information processing an important step is the identification of extraction of a set of features in variants which concentrates the essential information of this input pattern set this leads to economy of representation which results in the significant saving in storage and transmissions bandwidth requirements by which of this nature computational maps provide a technique for efficient and dynamic processing of informations let me continue the example of this topology preservation in the next video thank you